So we're joined by Jack Marnie, a first year player at North Melbourne. Jack, uh, where are you at the moment, mate? It looked like you're outside, just finished a training block or something like that. Yeah, I just had a bike this morning, um, so I did that outside. Um, so I'm just in the backyard now. Um, just had my shower and into meetings for the rest of the day. When you say in the backyard, is that um, who do you live with? Are you with your parents or where, what suburb are you in? Yeah, I'm in East Melbourne with my parents and younger brother. Um, I've been here my whole life, so I haven't really had to change much this year, which has been easy. Were you tempted to go into a different house when you first joined North Melbourne or did, were you keen just to stay at home, just keep it normal? Um, I think it was probably something you think about when you get drafted, whether like you move out with a player or something. Um, some teams do it differently. Um, but North kind of were happy for me to stay at home because it's not too far away from the club. So that's probably made it easier. I don't have, when I get home from a big day of training, I don't have to do a heap. <laughs> Dinner's cooked for me and don't have to do as much as if I was living by myself. So You've got I mean, it good. You've got it good. Yeah. Mate, um, I'm particularly interested to talk to you about the predicament that you're in um, in particular. So you had a, a really, really fantastic preseason since joining the club in the draft. You were the most talked about draftee at North Melbourne, um, the most hyped draftee. You got... I think three preseason games under your belt in the lead up to round one. And then everything's just come to this grinding halt. Um, what has it meant for you and how have you sort of got your head around what's happened? Yeah, obviously it's pretty strange. I think it's pretty weird for everyone. I couldn't really imagine my first year would be like this, but um, I think probably the main thing going away from training with the group to doing my own thing now, it's kind of, just try and keep a fairly normal routine, um, like get training done in the morning. Um, don't like stay up too late or get caught in sitting around all day. Um, just trying to keep the motivation levels up because we know that hopefully we'll be back playing soon. So um, see this as a chance to try and improve a few things rather than just have a break, I guess. So you get that little, I suppose, that sample size test or taste of, of AFL life then you get sent away. So can you recalibrate and then when you come back be, you know, even better than, you know, than what you were when you're at the club? Yeah, I think so. It's probably in a sense, not an awful thing in that I've got a taste of, I know what it's like um, training and having the full professional week. And now I've had a few weeks off to kind of really think about how um, a normal week is at an AFL club. And rather, I think sometimes, Earlier in the year, like you get a bit tired after a week and you kind of just sit down and you don't really think about it too much and you roll into the next week. Whereas now I think I've got a taste of it and know what to expect when we come back and hopefully I'll be able to um, jump back in and really keep improving. Have you spoken to any other draftees from any other clubs um, that you may have known through your junior football um, and just to sort of see how they're handling it and if they're doing anything different to what you are or doing anything better than what you are or vice versa? Yeah, I've spoken to a few of the boys I played under-18s with at Sandy um, and a couple at Oakley. Um, everyone's kind of feeling pretty similar. Like, it's strange not being able to do much. Um, most people are training by themselves or with one other. Um, I think, and then getting a bit restless in the afternoons with not much to do. But um, So people are kind of just calling each other, staying in touch, um, which has helped as well um, to know that, all the other clubs are kind of in the same boat. I think we're all doing pretty similar things. So um, that's probably hasn't been a bad thing, keeping in touch with them. So what about training for you? Like, what have you been able to do? And have you got someone else that you can train with? Because in talking to all the boys across these Zoom chats that we've been doing, one of the hardest things, obviously, is to keep your skill level up without really anyone else to sort of kick to or yeah. kick with. Um, how have you done that? What's, what's your program look like? Yeah, so I've got... Um, running three times a week most weeks and then with skills as well and a few cross training sessions um i've done it i don't know, I haven't had a set training partner i've done it with a few guys who are aiming to get drafted this year i went to school with um a couple of local mates and then a few boys from the club i'm having a kick with will walker on friday which should be good um and then a couple of the first year boys as well so it's kind of it's probably kept it fresh changing it up um just trying to um, stay on top of everything and keep motivation up. Um, 
when obviously it's a bit different going to the local oval and training by yourself or with one other instead of coming into Arden Street and training with 40 other guys. That's exactly right. What about the guys that you just mentioned that you went to school with and are looking to get drafted this year? I mean, that's this has had a massive impact on them not being able to play games in front of recruiters. What are they saying? Yeah, yeah no, they're in a really strange situation. They're not sure, um, a bit like us, when they're going to start playing again or even if they will. Um, and then obviously not knowing whether the draft, well, how the draft is going to take place this year. Um, it's kind of, they're just training without really knowing what's going on. So that's pretty weird for them, but um, they're still trying to work hard and keep on top of things. So if um, all comes back to normal, they'll be ready to go. What about your contact with um, other North Melbourne players across, you know, this technology, Zoom and, and Teams? Um, you, you've got a care group, I imagine, that, you know, a little yeah. group of guys that get together more regularly. How have you found that and how important has that been for you just to stay in touch? Yeah, no, it's been really good. I think, um, like, you can get a bit bored at home, spending time with the family the whole time. Like, it's good um, for little bits, but for these long few months in a row just with family it's a bit hard so getting on the calls with um all the care groups and team meetings and footy meetings it's just good to see someone else's face and have a chat um talk a bit of footy but then talk a lot about other stuff just see how we're all going um kind of breaks up the week and adds a bit of structure as well having meetings on um throughout the day I guess you're not wasting as much time you got something to look forward to I think it's made it a lot easier so we know when all this happened that there was a, a bit of a, a ram raid at the club with players going in and stealing equipment. Yeah. Um, being one of the first year guys, did you get sort of knocked down the pecking order a little bit yeah. into what you were able to get? Like, did all the big boys like Robbie Tarrant just grab all the big weights and you were left with the dregs? How did that all sort of, um, how did that all play out? Yeah, I don't think many of us first years got much. I've got a couple of dumbbells, but that's about it. <laughs> I have, I've got a fair amount of stuff at home, though, so it hasn't been too bad. But, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I didn't get much at all. <laughs> <laughs> is there, So is there a lot you can do there? Like with, I mean, you, you've already got some stuff at home, but is that one area that you can do some work in away from the club? Like is it more in the gym that you'll focus on or is it more fitness that you'll focus on? Yeah, probably a bit of both. I think running's easy in the sense you can do that kind of whenever um, and go down to the oval and go for a run. Um, but then, yeah, I've probably done a bit more weights than I guess what I normally would. Um, obviously a bit different having not the full equipment, but um, even with dumbbells and you can do body weight stuff, I've probably done that just as something to do at times. Like there's not much to fill in the day. So um, get down and do a circuit or something that, we've got set in our program and then you can do a bit more. Um, that's probably, yeah, been one thing that I've done. With um, with the situation, the AFL's talking about these hubs, um, you know, teams being sort of locked away, I suppose, in a particular region with, you know, six to eight other clubs and playing more frequently, I suppose, as well. And it could be two to three games a week. Do you think that just increases your chances of getting AFL games as, as a first-year player? Yeah, I guess so. I think you'll probably see that um, and think there'll be more players on the list that'll get games and more rotations and stuff. So I think, yeah, it's probably definitely an opportunity that if that's the case, um, could come my way. So I just got to make sure that I'm staying on top of everything I can do and put myself in a position to play if that's the way we go and get a chance. So yeah, for sure. Well, mate, um, thank you so much for the chat. Um, really good to just check in on you and see how you're faring. Um, looks like you're doing all right and your mum's looking after you, which is great with the cooking yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff as well. Hope you make her some meals too sometimes. Yeah, I'm not the greatest cook, but I try. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might say that. Yeah, no, I'm kind of a breakfast specialty with some toast and that's about my extent of cooking. <laughs> right. Well, you've got a chance now. You can improve your skills in the kitchen now. Yeah. You have time, so... Yeah, Mother's know. Day's coming up too, only a couple of weeks away. So maybe you can hone your skills for that. Yeah, I might have to. There's a bit of work to do before then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, stay safe and um, all the best, buddy. We'll, we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Cheers, hey. Good Thanks, to Jack. Talk to you.